<laughs> Here we go. Far walk, walk. It is a far walk. And I don't want to walk shaking the GoPro around. So I'll show a shot of it here and there. Well, there's a lot of vines in that old oak tree. Look at the... Man, the underbrush. And like Zach said, there's a break in there. <laughs> Looks like it's been that way for a long time, and I don't know what did that, but there it is. Yeah, this looks like it ought to be part of the Smith Hall. Well, we're just going to meander around here, see what we run into. My great-grandfather lived right out to the left there through the trees and my grandfather actually lived there but the story was about my I think my great-grandfather his dad and that was that he used to be a fox hunter hunted foxes at night by himself Ooh, Double barrel good. 12 gauge. What'd you say? That ain't good. What? Did it, by, did it by yourself? Oh. Yeah, it's not too good of an idea. But, uh, there's an old log cabin on the ridge up here where a couple Indians used to live. And it has since fallen down. But uh, looks like something blazed that tree right there. I don't know what that is on that tree. See that? Yeah. Anyway, he was a whittler. He liked to whittle. And uh, I heard the story, an old tale he used to say was that. Uh, he was out hunting fox on this ridge here, above the Smith Hollow, and uh, one night, and he reached out to break a twig off, a little limb, off of a bush, and uh, realized that he wasn't uh, able to reach it. He wasn't quite close enough to it. So as he was scanning the area, he uh, just absent-mindedly took a step closer toward it so he could break it and he still couldn't feel it with his hand so he turned to it and looked right at it and it seemed like it was further away than when he first started so he was kind of taken aback by that tree seemed more distant than it was before so he was going to step up much closer to it while he was looking at it when it started swaying back and forth. So at that point, he stepped back away from it to see the thing even, you know, more full. And stepped back and looked at it, and it was swinging from left and right, he said. And it got to be swinging so violently that it was almost touching the ground on each side. And he looked down and there was a woman sitting underneath it holding a baby. He said it was such a shocking thing for him to see that he turned and left and just got away from there. That's a strange story. And that old log cabin up here that has fallen down uh, is known as the Quaker Meeting House. I guess the Quakers must have 
you know, maybe they built the thing or something and used to meet in there. But the Indians ended up getting it. Hello, Zach. Um, you see uh, that Y in the mode area you got a left side and a right side. Yeah. We used to go right between it, me and Jason, Brian, in between it and back into those trees just in front of them not all the way in them just squat down in the shadows in front of them and turn the fox call on because I used to trap foxes here and I knew there was a good many here and we watched that area and the area we just came out of and the woods to see if we could call a fox out wouldn't you know it one of them started barking in the bushes behind us. Hmm. Yeah, that's the worst scenario you can get. You can't see anything shining light through the trees like that. That was right there, yeah. We used to walk up here about midnight. We'll go up top of this little rise and take a left at the Y. on up this way that we'll follow it past the ruins of that old cabin if we go that far but uh uh-huh wild grapes come off the vine up above you are these good to eat grouse eat them they're sour for us but the grouse eat them when they're crying out loud you see that yeah I thought they left. There's another flock of robins today. Yep. In here, flying around. Look at that old grapevine. Workers have that maple. Yeah. Yep. And we'll walk up through here. I'm right there. Now see that? Uh, that to me looks like that was just placed there. And it got the big end up. Hmm. You see it? What are you, what are you looking at, Zach? Do you see something? Oh, yeah. I don't know if that was on there or not. That don't look like it. 
Yeah, I don't think so. I fell from somewhere else, I think. But look stacked up behind you there. See them? Them leans. Right there. Yeah. Look how that one's caught in a the vine there. And then the other ones are attached to the vine that's wrapped around that one. Yeah, so. and together, somehow they s support so they can stand up there. Uh, <coughs> Oh, yeah, you got a centipede. That stump right there just looks looks too big for any three of these. Any of these these that are here. It may have come off of it, but they ended up all stacked up real nice. Can't move it. Watch you don't move it. <laughs> it might fall. Yeah. Yep. Uh, a lot of robins here. See him? Hello, Zach. Uh, let's sit down just for a second. Uh. I don't know if the camera will pick up any robins or not, but yep, there's another flock of robins that hasn't left yet.
Well, let's keep easing our way out through here, Zach. So we get up the top. to an animal. Well, that's in a one right beside it. Hard to believe that's a grapevine, a wild grapevine. Where does it come up out of the ground at? Right there where it looks like it is? Man, look, that's, that must be a five inch diameter vine. 
You're standing on it. Yeah. <laughs> Is it kind of solid? It ought to be leaning against that tree. Can you come on out the other way? <laughs> That's it. Right there where you're where your left foot at both feet. Yeah, that goes into the ground, don't it? Yep, and it comes over here. That's it going up here. Oh my, look what look what it did to the top of the tree. Yeesh. It probably fell down on it. Wow. Start out through here. Just head straight out through there, Zach. I'm coming. Just gonna take my time. Them two old dead ones there. The one on the right fell over or leaned over through a Y in the top of the one that leaned over from the left. You think I'd have to, I don't know if I did that at the same time. But anyway, <laughs> it's hard to tell if they just naturally fell that way or if that was uh, arranged, huh? Put there. Yeah, I don't know. Can't say for sure. on what's left of the Quaker Meeting House. My mom was raised part of her life down over the hill here in the farm. And she used to come up here and get up on a roof with some of her brothers or sisters and pick, I think it was cherries off of a cherry tree. So they could reach it once you get up here. For most of my life, that building stood there. It was a log cabin. One day, I was out here hunting ginseng. I see Becky's been up here. Mandy and Luke has been here, your dad. And uh, I don't know if they did get to see it when it was standing, but it just fell down. And that's the corner of it right there, see? and trees are growing up through it. See if I can get through here. <laughs> anyway, this is the corner of the old Quaker meeting house. Look at that. Somebody put the rocks in there. Somebody Cut the connections where the corners fit. Years ago, somebody stood right here where we are, chopping them, knowing what they're doing. Oh. And where you're standing was the chimney that went up through it. And beyond you, over there, was a stairway that went up. One time, it was. People called this home one time. Yeah, you got a feather. You hear what I said? Yeah. Little kids woke up in here in the morning. <laughs> Had their breakfast here, spent their day here. On this ridge. to the, the other side of that bend and see what's holding that one down. How did that get across to all of them trees like that? And then down to the ground. <laughs> Didn't grow like that. Somehow, 
that came down right there from it probably was standing straight up at one time like stuck in the ground, stuck in the ground yeah yep ain't that crazy You watch that don't snap off on you. Yeah, this is called uh, Quaker Hill. And we just walked up over the back side of the, the ridge. And that you're looking down into is the Smith Hall. That is a Smith Hollow. That's the place I told you there's five hills down in there. And how you can get turned around. What are you pointing at? Yeah, a game commission does that. This is state game land. See that big sycamore down in there? Yep. And it is hard to walk down through that place. Mm -hmm. Remember being... When was that? Yesterday? The day before? Day before. Day before, yeah. Look at that bend there. And it goes all the way down to the ground. <coughs> yeah. Glenn picks up on him all the time. And your grandmother, Viv. Uh, I, that's not called a shelter. I don't know what you call that, but uh, he points out that some of the things that are really small like that, they have a certain look to them. You can't put your finger on it except it looks like they were placed there because of how they're arranged, you know. Now, that may be, I don't know. Yeah, I was uh, heading toward that one when I come over to you. I don't know. <coughs> when you, you look at how they're placed. Yeah, placed in here. It just looks like it's loose. Yeah, and this here is a, a break, see? Mm -hmm. Well, let's walk one out this right away. How's that? Tied down. Tied down? To a grapevine. And uh, get some new. I'm telling you, you got it smart. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Looks like the start of a teepee, huh? <coughs> Look at that. Wow. How that stuck through there? And then that small one coming up from the other side through that one fork too. Hey, sturdy. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I mean, just sticks. How they shove them down in the ground? Yeah, and most of them here have been skinned off. They got the bark all off of them. Mm -hmm. How you supposed to make a TP? That is something. You know, that might be what gave the Indians the idea to do it. You know, 
you had cloth around that. I think we're going to walk up that way. See this bend here? <coughs> Look around too. I, I, a lot of times I overlook the little things. Yeah, see that tree bend? There's two of them here. <coughs> this one connects to that broken tree right here. Oh yeah. Yeah, it won't move. Yeah, somebody broke that off and laid it down there. You wait. I'm going to walk around so we can see that one. <laughs> That's put in there in such a way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, Zach, touch that one. <clears throat> no, the other one. No, the other one. That. If that wasn't, don't don't mess it up. If that wasn't behind uh, behind that tree to your back right there, if that was pulled out around into the woods out here, that would fly straight up. Yeah. Look at that. Now that one thing that's incorporated there is really old, ain't it? No, two of them are. Yeah. That's one that's going horizontal. That's really old. And that one too. Yeah, this one's stuck in the ground. Is it? Yeah. Yep. I believe that. Wow. You know, the other day, I saw a tree bend. You know how they are. You know, bent like that real acutely. And it was the thing, it was low to the ground, it was a small one. And it was the thing that was holding down a bigger tree bend perpendicular to it. Yeah. Okay. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just... Yeah. Okay. Strange. <laughs> you ever notice looking around when you see it? couple tree bends in one area and some activity kind of concentrated. The leaves look all tore up like like there was a small crowd here or something. Yeah. Well, that far ridge is where we would have to walk. Way out there, the highest last tree and turn right and follow that across the horizon that would be walking down the length of the north ridge that defines Smith Hollow to where you see it, the ridge get lower in there and the daylight come in. Oh, I don't know, a mile or two away to get to the place where Zach and I came in just two days ago. And the left ridge is just beyond Zach and it does the same thing on this side. <clears throat> Either way is too far to go right now because we don't have time to walk that distance and we know what it would be like going straight through the Smith Hollow because it would take maybe even longer just to get through the brush. So we don't have enough time to go either of the two ridges or down through the hollow before it gets dark. So we're going to have to head back to where we parked the escape, which is that way about a half a mile. But we may wander off to the left when we get to the top and look around a little.
out here toward me. Nope. Right there. Hold it. <coughs> wild grapes. They grow by the millions all across PA. That's all these vines you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Makes food for a lot of birds. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like it's placed there. So. Oh, well, Zach. Take our time, work our way to the top up here. Start heading back toward the escape because once again, it's going to get dark quicker than you think. If you see any little glyphs on the ground, Point them out to me. I usually miss them. Looks like we're going to have to walk under a tree bend to get out of here, huh? And look at that gnarly old tree behind you there. Wow. Huh? Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Hey, would you walk up and stand under the very middle of that. I won't see how how tall, how high that tree bend is. That's almost three of you. Which would be about 18 feet. Huh. Okay. I'm coming. Zach, it might spring up. I don't know. It's been there a while. Huh? How can that be? That one fell from the other side. You know what I'm saying? That one fell from the other side of this clearing. It couldn't have grabbed the hole of the top of that one and pulled it down. Is that what's holding it? ball and look at this thing and see if it just fell straight over or did it not maybe it didn't grow there because there's another little tree standing there if you stood this tree up is that where this tree grew yeah okay so. okay good huh
reach over across the other side and catch the top of this one and pull it down. This one grew straight up over there. This one, look, it can only reach that far. This one was brought down and put under here. Look at that horizontal thing laying there. See that? Mm -hmm. Kind of woven between all of them. It's like you're going into a different dimension. <laughs> I don't know how that, how this happened. This would be a good place to sit. Watch for deer, if he was deer hunting. You got three different runs coming into this confluence right here. See straight ahead of us. Yeah. Right into those woods. If you go all the way down to the bottom and up the other side to hit the road, if you went right on the road, made a right hand turn, you'd only go about 200 yards and you'd come to a house. And the folks that lived in there watched. Uh, mother black bear and two cubs come from that distance way over there you know what I mean yeah and come down by their house crossed over the road come up over this region they went down into Smith Hall yeah and remember I told you when I was fox hunting one night I was waiting on Brian to come up out of the ditch so we could get in the car and go and that black bear run across the road that was above the ditch and jumped down into the ditch where he was, probably 30 feet from him, and he didn't even know it until I yelled. Well, that's where that black bear would have uh, come out at if it went into the, to the Smith Hollow right here. If it came up over there and went into here and went all the way through the Smith Hollow, you know, at its own pace, not just trying to get out, but I mean, if it, if it was spending some time in here and that night decided to move out, it would come out down there at Sea Lawn by that ditch where Brian was down in there. When it jumped in, that's where it would come out. I might have to start bringing my 44 with me. <laughs> I've never been afraid in the woods. Yeah, you just have to be protected. Well, I mean, I've. I don't, I just don't have any fear in the woods. I've never felt like I was alone either. I felt like I was a, I was a presence in here. Like you wanted to be in here. Yeah. I do want to be in here. I like it in the woods. This seems basic and primal and sensible. Nature does. If we would have came up here, and right there, and passed through here, went to another dimension. Do you think we did? <laughs> no. Like, if we. I don't think so. I think it's possible. Yeah, I mean, that there's a. There's that evidence of. The Man Mandela effect kind of supports the idea of being maybe an infinite number of realities and our timeline could swing back and forth between a couple of them as we go through life. And some people will... Don't come back. Huh? Some people don't come back. <laughs> no. 
they stay in when they're in, they're there. Well, it's hard to tell. Sentient life is amazing. When you stop to think that something is not only alive, but it knows it's alive, okay? Mm -hmm. You can imagine that as far as matter is concerned. Mm -hmm. Something that has weight, takes up us. space. Yeah, us, physical. But imagine sentient life that is aware of itself. It's alive and knows it is, but it's composed of energy instead of matter. That could be what spirit is, living energy. And we had one famous scientist, old Albert Einstein. <laughs> Einstein. Basically, he said that energy and matter are two forms of the same thing. If you speed matter up to the speed of light, that it would go out in a burst of light, it would become energy. And if you could somehow slow the vibration of energy down, matter would coalesce out of it and you'd have a lump of something hit the floor. <laughs> so how come one of them can have consciousness and not the other, when they're actually two forms of the same thing? Did you hear something behind, behind you there? I did. I don't know what it was. Anyway, let's walk on out to our left here. I'm pretty sure that we're still in the same dimension that we was in, Zach, when we walked up here. Exact. And as you say that's a bow behind it there. Grab it, tip the hook to the ground. Pick it up. Put it back. <laughs> Put it back where it was. What the heck? It's not. How come it don't lean on a tree? What's holding it straight up? It should fall over toward the big tree. It was in the ground. Okay. Don't be calling these trees any names today. <laughs> I got a guy from halfway around the world wanted to know if there was somebody calling. 
he heard a voice, you remember, mm -hmm. said, you stooge, that was you, you were hollering at the trees. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but show me what you see here. Oh, I see it from here. An X. Okay, I'm fine. <coughs> oh. There's a right of way there, huh? That's okay. Well, that one's still living there, I guess. Yeah. That one in the middle. I don't know if that's grown up out of there or if it's dead. See that big one? Not that one. That big one. In the middle. Yeah, it's probably growing there. Yeah, that's the main one everything's held on to. Hmm. Now what is that? Huh. Some skin, some not. One still growing. Is a bend. It was look. The thing that was growing is bent over and got dead ones laying on top of it, piled up there holding it down. Yoy. Well, I tell you, you get anywhere around the Smith Hollow, you get into that enchanted forest stuff, briars and bushes, vines. Well, did you get your stuff put away? Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, alrighty. 